an economic union should be one-third, EU should be one-third, and the rest of the world should be one-third. One there is a qualified labor force that could uh, compete on the market. The labor force is still relatively cheap. The Belarusians are very systematically giving impression that they are going through some major political change in order to create the situation and the atmosphere for this economic move, which is absolutely smart from them. On the other hand, Vladimir Vladimirovich is a lovely man, of course, but he occasionally hurts sensitivities. When he said that Kazakhstan did not have sovereignty ever, August 2014, and when he also said that I instructed the Minister of Foreign Affairs and the Foreign Minister, I watched it on live television on Russian uh, TV every evening, I enjoyed it. Uh, and uh, he said, and I instructed the foreign and defense ministers in order to negotiate the terms of establishing a second air base in Minsk, in, in Belarus. That was something, you know, because you are talking to the local uh, village leader in these terms and not to the head of another sovereign entity. You say, okay, I'm going to use the opportunity the next time I meet President Lukashenko and we'll speak with him about it. And the next day Lukashenko found a microphone somewhere in Minsk and said, we are not planning to have a second airbase, finito. Now the Belarusians are playing with Zapad, saying, okay, Zapad, which is not so big as it was 2009, this is somewhat smaller, we are going to invite international observers. A very sensitive issue, the Russians hate the entire idea. Because, of course, there was this heated atmosphere, what if they stay, what if they don't leave, and so on and so forth. Russia is a little bit of an elephant in a, in a, in a China shop. Uh, at the same time, those days when they were really at loggerheads, when the Russian television showed this film about the private life of Lukashenko, and so on and so forth, are sort of gone. Uh, two people have to live with each other. And certainly the previous idea, Boris Yeltsin's time, that Belarus is the other half of the, of, the, of, the, of the Union state is gone because Putin doesn't have this idea. He wants to treat Belarus as a, as a cry or an oblast of the Russian Federation, and this is very difficult to manage. Yeah, not even that. Okay, now with that, we will we'll wrap up and turn things back over to uh, Chris Pirelli. All right, well, thank you all uh, very much uh, to the panel uh, for, for providing some very interesting insights. I hope it was interesting for you. Uh, I appreciate uh, you uh, sticking around and also your questions. Uh, certainly, you may feel free afterwards to engage uh, the panel members. I'll just go ahead and volunteer them right now. Uh, if you have further discussions that you'd like to have, uh, please feel free. Um, I'm just going to take a few more moments of your time uh, to talk a little bit about what's going on at the Marshall Center and what some opportunities could be for, for, uh, for alumni. Uh, and then uh, we do have uh, a buffet out there waiting for us uh, as soon as we adjourn. And uh, I welcome you to join us there. So uh, I don't know when it was that you were in Garmisch the last time. Perhaps it was the summer, perhaps it was the winter. Um, but here you see some snow. This is not a recent photo. Right now, it was uh, uh, last week, it was about th almost 30 degrees. Um, but anyway, I like to put that up there to give people uh, an idea or perhaps uh, help them remember a little bit. So where does Poland stand uh, with the Marshall Center? Well, you have almost 300 uh, graduates over the last 24 years, and you are part of a larger network around the world of over 12,000 alumni from 152 countries. Um, this, is, uh, this is very significant, and for those of you who that have used your alumni network, uh, then perhaps you uh, can appreciate uh, how, how useful this is, whether it's for business or whether it's for, for private, uh, private reasons. So I'm just going to talk a, a few minutes about some of the opportunities that are available for alumni. First of all, uh, publications. Uh, we have a, a quarterly magazine called Per Concordium. Uh, it is both printed in paper and online, and it's done also in English and in Russian. 
Uh, and if you are interested to receive this uh, magazine, first of all, on the, on the tables here at the front left, your left of the room, I brought some copies of the Per Concordia magazine. I encourage you to take, take one, uh, take it home with you, and there are also some little cards there. If you want to receive the magazine in the mail, uh, then just go ahead and put your name and your address on there. We'll send it to your home or to your office, whatever you prefer. Um, but the opportunity here for alumni also is to publish in this magazine. So if you are interested, if you are pursuing a particular academic subject or study, uh, and uh, I think we actually have in the room here someone who has recently published something in the Perconcordium magazine, Colonel Fritz, one of our uh, scholars. More on that later. So anyway, that's uh, the Perconcordium magazine. We also have a weekly newsletter this is an email newsletter that you can receive, and it has uh, essentially hyperlinks to news articles from around the world, uh, focused mainly on our transnational topics of counterterrorism, countering organized crime, and cybersecurity. Uh, it's very easy. You can subscribe or unsubscribe. You can receive the email. You can ignore it. Or you can open up and click on just those topics that are of interest to you. We pay someone to actually scour the, the international news and find articles that are of interest. So uh, another very, uh, very popular opportunity is to return to Garmisch as a, as a Marshall Center alumni scholar. Um, so last year we had uh, eight scholarships to offer for alumni and as for 2018 we're going to have actually I think 15 now. Um, the, the program has grown quite a bit and this is where uh, we invite you to come back to Garmisch for a five-week scholarship period, all expenses paid. We'll give you a faculty advisor and an office and access to our research library and, uh, and you can pursue a topic of your interest. Uh, it can be a topic that you are already working on as part of graduate studies or it could be something independent of that. Uh, we'll put out a call for applications in August and uh, you'll see that both, you'll get an email about that and you'll be able to read about it on our website. Oh, uh, of course, there's a handsome picture of Colonel Fritz receiving his uh, diploma from our former dean. Uh, there's another opportunity, and this is a self-funded opportunity, and this is also available to pretty much anyone. You must not, be, must not necessarily be an alumnus uh, from the Marshall Center, but with the uh, University of the Bundeswehr, the German military university, uh, we have an agreement to uh, award a master's in international security studies. Uh, and it's a, uh, a program that you, you would fund yourself. Uh, some of the courses are taught uh, at the Marshall Center and are actual Marshall Center resident courses and the rest are administered by the University of the Bundeswehr. Uh, the typical application period for that is in the springtime. If you're interested, uh, come see me. So we do have also alumni associations. Some of them are very formal uh, and active. I'd say in the, the Balkan region, we have some very uh, active associations. Some of them are actual NGOs. Uh, and then some of them in other regions are maybe just very informal, maybe just a group of people who get together and have a beer every once in a while. But uh, you're certainly uh, welcome to, to form an association like that if you're interested in, in uh, pursuing that a little bit more. There is notionally a point of contact here for a, a an alumni association in Poland, and if you're interested in, in uh, developing that a little bit more, let me know. Um, this is another very interesting thing where we invite you to come back to Garmisch and talk uh, on a particular topic that you might have expertise in. So we take our transnational themes, uh, cybersecurity, organized crime, and counterterrorism. We invite alumni to come back and, and speak on those topics if they are working in that, uh, in, in that particular area. I'll give an example. We, we narrow it down and we'll pick a very, very specific topic. So for the, ne the upcoming uh, counterterrorism COI that we're doing, the topic is terrorism, terrorists in prison. That's a very, very narrow subset of the counterterrorism topic. But believe it or not, of all of our 12,000 alumni out there, there are people who are experts in that. And they have something valuable to share with the rest of the community. Success stories or, or failures, and sometimes the failures are more interesting. 
And so we do these uh, five times a year in Garmish, and uh, if you're interested, uh, please let us know. You'll receive an email uh, inviting you to, uh, to submit a paper for that. So I mentioned uh, in August we've got counterterrorism. Another one uh, we, in, in November for counterterrorism. We just concluded one for cybersecurity, and in, earlier in the year we've had them for the other programs. This is what we're doing right now. This is sort of a, an opportunity where we'll come to uh, find an excuse to come to uh, one of your capitals and uh, give you a little taste of, uh, uh, or perhaps help you remember what it was like in Garmisch to talk about an interesting international security topic and to get together with each other. Uh, it's always interesting when we do an event like this, inevitably there are people from the same country, possibly from the same ministry, who have never met each other before uh, if it were not for the Marshall Center. So. And so here you see uh, our next uh, events. Uh, I know there was a gentleman from Lithuania earlier. Uh, we'll be doing an event in Vilnius uh, at the end of the month, and then we generally try and touch each capital in our, in our traditional geographic area about once a year, so that's about 30 a year. Um, our, our resident course calendar is as busy as it's ever been. This is, uh, we're coming up on the end of 2017. 2018 looks very much like this. If you're interested in some of these courses, you can find details about them on the website. And of course, there's always the possibility to come back to Garmisch as, a, as an adjunct faculty member, as a guest speaker, uh, a seminar leader, or in some particular role. The picture across the bottom is uh, from a counterterrorism community of interest event that we did last year. And uh, every one of them, uh, they were all speakers for the COI event, and they were all graduates from various programs. Um, we also produce, of course, the recognition book for you. Um, you're probably familiar with it if, uh, when you were in Garmisch, but uh, this I've printed the recognition book for Poland. This is the list of all 100 and, or, I'm sorry, 296 graduates. Uh, so you're in here. Um, if you're interested to make sure that we have current information on you, please uh, come down here and grab the pen and do a little change on here because it could be that we have uh, an older photo of you or we have some outdated information that says maybe uh, you're a captain and you work in, a, in, uh, in some company somewhere where actually now you're the chief of staff. Um, <laughs> you'll notice uh, some distinguished people in here. For example, uh, the, the foreign minister uh, from Poland is a graduate. Uh, from the Marshall Center. And then I just want to close with, uh, with a, a very recent quote. Uh, you, you may have heard that uh, General Mattis and uh, Secretary van der Leyen were in Garmisch uh, just oh, two weeks ago uh, for uh, the anniversary of the, the speech, uh, George Marshall's uh, speech on the Marshall that sort of kicked off the idea of the Marshall Plan. Anyway, um, General Mattis, the U.S. Defense Secretary, left us with a, a, a great quote that I intend to get a lot of mileage out of at events like this. And uh, it's really a compliment to you all. Uh, and uh, it's something that, uh, that we're going to make sure that we, we, we get broad coverage on. It really is important because you are uh, these thought leaders and these practitioners and the people who are doing this kind of work uh, for your country and for international security in general. And so with that, uh, uh, that concludes this, uh, this evening's uh, alumni outreach event, this evening's special event of the Warsaw East European Conference. Uh, and I encourage you please to join us out in the lobby for, uh, for some uh, buffet. Thank you very much.